Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are all welcome to the, the public lecture. May I request at this point for everybody to mute their microphone because we are starting, unless when you are called upon to speak. It is traditional in all uh, NSH engagements, we start with, uh, we always start with a prayer. May I call on Cyril to pray for, to pray for us. Cyril Ojonu, the chapter secretary, opening prayer. You need to admit yourself. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this second lecture we have, public lecture we are having this year. But I thank you because the discussions we will have will be useful to Nigeria and to mankind. It will help to make us to progress better. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, thank you, uh, Cyril. The, the chairman of this occasion is, uh, is uh, Engineer Sayyidu Mohammed, the Deputy National President of the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers. And uh, we also have the chairman of the chapter, engineer Onyekachi Onugu. The presenter of today, Dr. Boniface Oda, is also online. And we have a guest of honor, Dr. Salihu Jamari is a is the managing director of NNPC Gas and Power Investment Company, who was recently transferred from uh, Ori. is based in Abuja now. So, and, um, and also a member of our, our chapter. So, um, before I hand over to the chairman, I want to speak a little bit about our guest presenter of today. Dr. Boniface Oda. Those that know him, know him as a teacher, a refinery teacher to the extent that some people are calling him professor, which I totally agree with. He joined NNPC in 1981, and he established the training uh, department in the KRPC. And his first task was to develop the capacity of the Nigerian uh, workers to take over from the foreigners that established the refinery. And he was able to achieve that within, below the schedule, ahead of the schedule that was given to him. He worked in various capacities in NPC. I will not go into the details because uh, in order to save time, but if you go to the chat area of this, meeting. I've already posted his uh, profile and also the program for this event. But Dr. Wada eventually retired from NNPC in 2003. So uh, recently, in uh, precisely in, in June this year, we celebrated his uh, 77th birthday. So he's a very young man that is still very stronger than some of us that are at the age of strength. You are welcome, sir, Dr. Oda. Thank you, Amen. The chairman, engineer, uh, Sayyidu Mohammed, our deputy national president, 
I will hand over to you. I understand you have another engagement somewhere, or you are already somewhere looking at the how masked up you are. So I now hand over to you to do your opening remarks and will excuse you thereafter to leave and attend to the occasion and come back and rejoin us if we are still here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Engineer Seydou, Mohammed, over to you. A short opening remark, sir. As you said, it doesn't seem to be here again. I, I can't see him. Yeah, he was a while ago. So, maybe, maybe it's a network. Cyril, is Engineer Onugu here now? Engineer Onugu. Is he with us? I'm not seeing him among the list here. Let me call him by phone. No, don't call him. As a secretary of the chapter, you can do the opening remark. OK. Just a short opening. You can do that on his behalf. Okay, on behalf of the chairman of the chapter and of the uh, overall chairman of this occasion, Engineer Saeed Mohammed, depending when they come on board our media for their comments, I would like to welcome everybody to this uh, second in our line of public lectures for. 2020. However, this is the first in our NSCH NSC reporting time frame that has just started in July 2020. We recognize the very importance of the issue of technical negotiation to professionals in this country. And based on that, we have uh, Pencil this because when we had a snippet of it during one of our public lectures, we felt that the general public deserve to draw from this world of wisdom that we are privileged to have in our chapter through the person of um, Dr. Engineer B.T. Wada. So I would like to hand over back to Engineer Mahmoud, to continue with the proceedings while the relevant uh, officers that are supposed to drive the occasion finally join. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Engineer Cyril. Now, um, Dr. Momo is here. Dr. Momo is going to do a wrap up at the end of the event. So, Engineer Cyril, you need to still stand by and give him back up, also be making notes just in case there are network, uh, uh, network issues. We have, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Dr. Salih Jamari is the, is the guest of honor. He just sent me an SMS it's like the same event that our uh, the chairman is attending. They are both there. It's one of their colleagues is getting uh, married. So that perhaps also explained why um, Engineer said suddenly went offline. So as soon as they are done, these weddings don't normally take time. They will rejoin us. I've already uh, uh, introduced Dr. Wada. Those people that join us after 
If you go to the chat area of this meeting, you will see his profile there and also a, pro a program of this event. You can read. So um, before I call on uh, Dr. Wada, I want to make this remark that we all meet our mic. We all meet our mic and we listen to him. We will not talk until he finish. Then we can start making contributions. Dr. Boniface Wada, are you ready? Uh, yes. Okay, sir. You can step forward now and uh, you have the mic and you can start the, the presentation. Can, can I share my screen? Yes, sir. Go ahead and share your screen. Okay. Are, you, are you able to see my screen? <clears throat> yes, sir. But put yes. it on PowerPoint and you have 30 minutes, sir. 30 minutes. Yes, yes sir. On, uh, on, on show. I, I, I thought with the, I thought with the uh, plenty of time at our disposal, uh, your ad, uh, on time to me. It doesn't matter. Let's I, 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 can, I can add, sir, depending on your performance. <laughs> All right. I think uh, I welcome everybody. I'll observe the protocol. Uh, put, it on, put it on PowerPoint show, sir. Put it on slideshow. Slideshow. Yes, there. Okay. Yes. Um, so, I have already been introduced. My, my name is Dr. Wada. I'm going to be talking on the topic uh, that is on display, Understanding Technical Negotiation. It's a big topic. It has been uh, delivered to our chapter. But we all start by uh, learning with the repetition. The teacher will say, repeat after me. So if you have listened to part of the lecture, it is still uh, a good learning process. The, today I'm going, the outline of my discussion will be, will be to give you a general concept of negotiation. Then, I will now talk about the technical negotiation itself. I have a case study so that you can see how those concepts are applied. And I will have some concluding remarks. I have also decided to uh, give you something to take away by way of homework. You know, I was introduced as a teacher, and as a teacher, I always like to uh, do homework. Negotiation, it's uh, usually, uh, it hasn't got a real uh, definition. Some people say it's confrontation, others say it's problem solving, yet others say it's conflict resolution. But uh, today, I would like to tell you that negotiation is uh, when it's a discussion in which two parties with divergent interests and positions arrive at a mutual understanding or agreement. What are interests? Let me give you an example. If you are selling a house, for instance. Your interest is to sell the house. And your position is the price you want to sell the house for. The buyer, his interest is to buy the house. His own position is the price he's offering you. So this is how this uh, uh, interest and positions 
come into play during negotiation. And what is negotiation is not dog of war. Who can negotiate? Human beings, of course. I've never come across a situation where animals negotiate. This is what animals do. Never negotiating. It's a, a process that leads into a warm handshake. That is the desired outcome. But why do we negotiate at all? Let's, let me quote from the famous British Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill, who once said, it's better to judge all than to war war. Do we realize that we negotiate on a daily basis? Maybe not, but negotiation is taking place all the time at personal level, in business, at national and international level. Let me give you an example of a couple with the only daughter, right from the time she starts getting to school age the couple begins to negotiate. Where to send the child to school? Should it be a public school or private? And when the child is going to school, they want to still negotiate. Will she be in border or going from the house? As the child gets to yet yeah, really level, do they want to send her abroad or should she study in the country? So all these are negotiations. Even when you go to the market, you are buying something, you are still negotiating. Who are the people that organizations wrongly think do not deserve or should have negotiation skills. Engineers, like yourselves, because many organizations don't believe that negotiation is necessary because you're there, either in the plant or whatever, when do you have time to negotiate? So they train lawyers, union leaders, personnel managers, and so on, ignoring engineers. But let me tell you, many of our engineers, they rise up. Some of them become chief executives of their organizations. And when they have not been exposed to negotiation skills, there is a problem. Because when the occasion comes for them to lead, they do not have the skills. So today's lecture, it's just meant to correct that impression and give you not uh, so much, but at least open your mind to negotiation so that you can on your own, like myself. Nobody taught me negotiation. What about uh, between children and parents? Who is a better negotiator? I will. Now I'll tell you that it has been concluded that children negotiate better than their parents. Yeah, the reasons are as follows. Children know, usually know what they want and they're going to get what they want regardless of how. They're also quick to, uh, to issue threats. Daddy, I'm not going to school again unless you buy me a new pair of shoes. They believe that their parents have unlimited make of human kindness. That is a given. They have no sense of guilt. They are ever ready for any showdown, never ashamed. Their own interest is short term. Now, let me have this. 
I'm not bothered about uh, tomorrow. Parents, on the other hand, are very shaky, not firm in their action. They know they have responsibility. They are ashamed in case of a short uh, showdown. And then they are all focused, it's long term. Uh, those of you who are still in service and have to deal with the union leaders, the union leaders negotiate like children. They are, their interest is now. We want this now. Why the management is thinking of long term, they are concerned about the now. And the, all those uh, characteristics of the children are the ones that the union leaders adapt. And we have many uh, unions in Nigeria that are doing that now, as is there, the medical people, and so on. So you have to deal with any union leader. Uh, you have to understand how they think. Let me just address the, the four stages of negotiation. This is not standard. Some people have more, some have five, seven, but for the purpose of our today's discussion, I'm going to uh, deal with the preparation for the negotiation, the opening, then the beginning that takes place, and eventually the closing stages of negotiation. But before embarking on any negotiation, your advice to have a BATNA. What is a BATNA? BATNA means best alternative to negotiated agreement. I'm sure you still don't seem to grasp what BATNA is. Let me give you an example. If you have a lot of money and you want to invest, you go into uh, a business you want to buy. Before going, uh, starting the negotiation, you should think of fixing this money in an account. And in good old days, when the return was very good, 10% or more, you say, if I don't invest this money, what, how, uh, what would be the alternative? And that's the, the, the money you like to get from that deposit, fixed deposit, is your partner. So during negotiation, you have the, uh, the lowest you can reach in that uh, business negotiation. So that's your partner. Now, what are the outcomes of negotiation? There are four. Party A wins, B loses. Party B loses, A wins. Both A and B lose, or both of them win. And we prefer the last one, the win-win. You've been hearing of win-win. This is the preferred form outcome of negotiation. Then what are the factors? that will lead to this win-win. The first on the list and the most important, I would say, is mutual trust between the parties. If you don't have trust, it's difficult for you to get to a win-win situation. Mutual respect, of course. Spirit of give and take. We'll be talking about concessions. So you will come across that. Desire for long-term relationship. This should be key uh, for businesses because long-term relationship is important. There are certain things, if you go to the market, you pick up an item. You don't care about uh, long-term because you are not likely to go to the same trader the following time you're in the market. Uh, then if we are dealing with international negotiation, the culture, of the different nations have to be respected. 
and of course, the people that you are going to be negotiating with. I'll give you examples of uh, the Japanese, the Italians, they all have different attitudes toward negotiation. In fact, Americans uh, found it very difficult to negotiate with Japanese until they sent uh, some of their chief executives to study the Japanese culture. Let me just uh, uh, digress a little and tell you about Japanese culture. They don't have the word no in their vocabulary, but don't take a Japanese uh, yes uh, that uh, they are going to do what they have agreed. Every game has its own grand rules. You play golf or tennis, there are rules to follow. Negotiation has many rules. I'll just give you examples of a few. What are you allowed? You are encouraged to ask questions during negotiation. Listen positively. Don't talk when the other side is uh, making their case. You make specific proposals. You use standards and you summarize very often during negotiation. You trade minor concessions. Concessions is what you are prepared to give. And, and uh, don't give concession without uh, getting something in return. Prioritize your objectives and they restate clearly what you have agreed on both sides. Bypass deadlocks situation. Always maintain a very uh, uh, tough stance, but be extremely polite, calm, like the little boy who was being flogged by the mother. We saw that on the news. And the, the boy turned to the mother and said, Mommy, be calm. I think the governor uh, uh, recognized that boy publicly for that simple expression of uh, maturity at his age. Be flexible, open-minded, persistent, but as we said, respect cultural norms. What, are you, what is not permitted? There are many don'ts. Don't provoke, interrupt, we said, listen. Don't just complain or threaten, attack, insult. Don't use markers. If that, this doesn't happen, I will walk out. Don't point score or talk too much like a, a typical teacher. If you're a teacher, you have to be very careful. And don't just continue saying no, 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 because you're not making progress. Be aggressive, submissive, but don't react to provocation. There are occasions during negotiation where you are provoked. Remember, you have to be calm. Or shut the other side down. This happens very often, particularly, as I said, if you're an engineer and you'll never be uh, schooled in the area of negotiation, you are sent to represent your company, you're likely to fall foul of some of this. Don't. Don't overstate your case and so on. The rest you can uh, uh, go, go through. Now we come to the first stage of negotiation, which is preparation. You see that I'm rushing through this because of the time Mohammed has given me, and uh, I don't want to ask for more time that he has given me. The importance of uh, preparation is summarized in Latin expression. Those of you that are literate in Latin. Quid desiderate pacem, preparate bellum. What does it mean? in human language, because they say Latin is a dead language. It simply means, let him who desires peace prepare for war. That's how important preparation is. What are the things that go into preparation? Many things, the right atmosphere, selecting the best time to negotiate and location, 
Children, again, I must tell you, they are very good at selecting the best time to negotiate with their parents. The father is watching his favorite team playing an important match. Maybe, mind you, that is the time the child will come to father to ask for a favor. Dad, can I go and play with Ido? Because dad had always been telling him not to play with Ido. But this time that the dad is watching, uh -huh. so dad has no time to argue. Please go, go, go. And then uh, the same thing, you go to the mother when she's cooking her favorite dish or talking to her uh, friend. Mommy, can I have a Fanta? And of course, the mommy has no time, but yes, can have the Fanta. You address all the who's, the why's, and what's. All you anticipate the questions they are going to ask you. Have good knowledge of the other side, if possible. Always good to know who you are going to be negotiating with. Your team selection, of course. Uh, they had to be uh, skills mixed, as we shall see in the, in the case study, and the style of negotiation that you are going to adapt. <clears throat> now, there are many styles, uh, but for brevity, let us just consider these two. There's soft negotiation and hard. In soft negotiation, participants are friends, while in the hard, Participants are adversaries. And so the goal is agreement. And the heart, the goal is victory. Be soft on the people and the problem. Be, do the opposite on, in the heart. Make concessions to maintain <clears throat> friendship. And the heart, demand concessions. Change your position easily. Dig into your position. Remember I told you what positions are? Make offers. Issue threats in the heart. Yield to pressure. Never. In the heart, you are the one applying the pressure. The, there is another, uh, a third style of negotiation which was developed by professors of uh, Harvard University. And it's called principled negotiation style. Here, the focus here is on interest rather than positions. Focus on what you want. You want to sell a house, that should be your focus. The price, it's only a guide. Invent options. For mutual gain, many options, uh, and then insist on uh, using objective criteria. Say things that can easily be verified, not anything from the blues. Without uh, you know, that you are going to devise. Uh, Mama, tell me when I get uh, uh, halfway the mark, so that I know at what speed I'll be going. Uh, the types of questions you are going to meet during negotiation, they can be open-ended question. That is when you want comprehensive response from the other side. Like, is there anything left unresolved? Or they could be closed. Do we have a deal? The answer is yes or no. There could be probing questions when you want clarity on specific issues. Please tell me more. They can be reflective. What about a bonus and a penalty clause in the negotiation? The question can be leading where the answer is obvious. So you will send us a draft contract agreement next week, won't you? The question can be hypothetical. That's when you bring in an issue that was not covered during the negotiation. Like the example uh, from the case study, or the other party asked, what will happen if tomorrow government bans export of products? Because they are dealing with products. And uh, they asked that question. But this issue was not 
they didn't discuss this. There can be multiple questions. Like, uh, how do I ensure uninterrupted operations, product quality, and the guaranteed storage of our products? In this type of multi, uh, multiple question, you're advised to answer one after the other. Don't try to uh, treat them uh, all at once. Of course, as I told you earlier, culture has a lot of influence uh, in negotiation. The Japanese, again, when you are dealing with Japanese, you are talking to him, he understands everything in English. The moment you ask for discount, that's when he will try to reach for his uh, uh, English Japanese dictionary to find out what that word means. And he will come back to you and say, Oh, yes, this can, yes. But he will tell you that uh, uh, he's not ready until he consults his <laughs> home company. So uh, uh, be very careful when you're dealing with uh, uh, people of other cultures. The Italians, of course. They will agree to everything, but they know because they're not going to be uh, bound by the agreement. As soon as uh, they start your, the project, they will start asking for revision. Mm -hmm. So that's why they tend to, be, to hurry to agree. What, is the, what are the other skills that uh, a good negotiator should possess? Of course, you have planning skills, because even your objectives, you're going to arrange them in some sort of order, priority. Problem solving, communication, ability to think clearly. Listening, it's a must. Your sense of judgment, and general intelligence. You must be analytical, assertive, adaptability and flexibility. Above all, you should be somebody of high integrity. The P's, four P's, will also say a good uh, negotiator should have. It should be positive, patient, placid, as calm as cucumber, and you should always be prepared. If you're not prepared, don't go into negotiation. We have broad, broadly covered uh, those uh, general concepts that I wanted, you know, there are a lot more, a lot more, but that will not permit. You've uh, gone more like, uh, than halfway now, sir. Okay, thank you, yeah. Mahmoud. I just wanted to tell you that uh, you have to watch out even body language can tell you. Uh, you can tell that when the other party is showing no more interest in what is going on. And you know that uh, you are not uh, impressing them. Technical negotiation does not exist in isolation. All those concepts that I have uh, mentioned are also applicable in technical negotiation. Uh, the uh, technical negotiation uh, hinges on technical issues, such as the sale of patent, royalties, project management, and so on. Those are areas that uh, 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 concern us as engineers. Uh, when you are into technical negotiation, you, you must uh, have good understanding of the subject in which negotiation is taking place. Uh, the example, the, uh, the question I have put at the end for you to practice is something to do with uh, patent sale. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, I'm going to uh, 
uh, illustrate uh, here in project management. The, the things that come into negotiation uh, leads to variations, and this can change the pro uh, project cost appreciably. The costing itself, for instance, there is a uh, currency involved in the uh, agreement. Uh, the timing, scheduling, quality of uh, products. This is uh, like a refinery negotiation. Uh, the case study it uh, involves one uh, refinery, East Coastal Refinery Company, and an American company, World Refinery Incorporated. The negotiation is. Uh, for them to go into third party refining. They want to bring products to this uh, refinery. And the person that is heading the arrangement, it's a uh, friend, uh, engineer Briggs, chemical engineer, head of business development. So before the negotiation started, they went into preparation. Remember, I told you preparation is very important. The first thing they did to select the team to meet the other side, the managing director of uh, ECRC, the director of operation, director of engineering, head business development, head production, finance, Lega. I told you about uh, team mix. This is how uh, companies and the venue of course is the conference room. Sometimes venue can give you advantage, sometimes not. For instance, while you are discussing within the refinery, you have the power, everything is to your advantage, but suppose you lose uh, power and all, everything comes to a stand to you. Even the conference room is in darkness. Of course, you've lost the power. The other side begins to wonder whether they should continue at all with the negotiation. So part of the preparation, they also looked at the quantity of crude to be processed, uh, the quality of crude, the delivery, entitlement of products, and the, all the uh, other things, the buyback of products, the fee that will be paid, and the terms of payment, operating law, and so on. I don't know uh, uh, people who are familiar with uh, refinery operations. Uh, we understand some of these uh, terms. Then the anticipated processing fee. When you refine crude, uh, when somebody refine crude for you, you pay him what we call processing fee. And they estimated they will want uh, anything from 1.2 to $2 per barrel. And then the capacity that they want to use is 30 barrels, a thousand barrels per day. And uh, they also realized they had uh, JT capacity limitation. And then they know the high tariffs of uh, NPA. And then, then all they know about the other side is that it's a renowned petroleum product trader. That's all. Now, the MD opened the negotiation. I told you opening, it's very important. You have to put up a strong opening, we say. Strong in the sense that uh, uh, if you open yourself to areas of weakness, the other side is going to uh, capitalize on that. So the MD here gave a brief history of the refinery and uh, its facilities, self-sufficient in power and the utilities, ability to refine international uh, to international standards, any switch crude, efficient evacuation facilities, and the cost they have spare parts. That's a spare part. That's why they are going into negotiation. Now uh, Dr. Brown, who is the commercial director of WRI, responded with a lot of uh, courtesy because 
of uh, the respect in the culture, uh, but to express the vision over the buyback proposal in MD's uh, opening remarks, and of course distributed uh, uh, document relevant negotiation. Part of the thing was to give the product slate. Uh, he had asked for 50,000 barrels of refining capacity, and they given the product slate, as you can see on the on your screen, the MD counter. He <laughs> said, with our JT limitation and storage tank constraints, we can only do it 25. Again, the 50 uh, the WRI had asked. And what was the, Dr. Brown's reaction? Simply said that even though we have started on a very shaky foundation, let me explain our position. We need sufficient products for the transatlantic journey. Mr. MD, your offer doesn't seem to guarantee that requirement. You see the language? Crafted language. And the MD realized that uh, maybe that uh, what the offer was uh, too little. He said, we are ready to increase the capacity if you can assure us of prompt evacuation of products. We cannot afford to tie down our tanks. Just listen to uh, Dr. Brown's response. You have my assurance. Of course, this, this is to make progress. And in addition, he went on, we promise to pay a storage fee for any delayed cargo. So any products that remains in your tank beyond our agreed uh, uh, storage period, we shall pay. So the MD in that case said, uh, yes, in that case, we go up to 30,000 barrels per day. But he noted the BSW of 0 0.8, basic uh, segment and water. This is what comes along with crude. And this is likely to foul our equipment. We shall only accept crude of uh, BSW of 0.5%. And what was the WRI found one? They simply said they were obliged. They also went ahead to offer $3 per metric ton of our state product. Now, they summarized, as you can see, they have summarized what they have agreed to so far. Uh, then, as I told you, there was need to break, go into rock up. And when they came back, these were the end, uh, uh, counter offers by the refiner. If you look at this, I mean, the, if you compare the two, if you put them side by side, you see everything was changed in their favor. The LPG has gone up in percentage because they know that the other part is not going to leave the LPG. Uh -huh. They have gone out on fuel oil and have gone out on fuel and loss, but making sure. On the other hand, they have gone down on PMS. The other side had wanted 34%. These percentages may mean very little to a non-refiner, but they are very important uh, because uh, uh, if you if I can if I can refine in a refinery and get up to 36 percent of PMS and the uh, AGO uh, and the vision fuel, that's it. Um, my profit is assured. Then came to the, the negotiation of issue, uh, you know, of uh, time of storage. How much time would they allow them to store products free of charge? Uh, they wanted 50 days, and they explained. They said that around transatlantic trip is approximately 28 days, and in case of insuff insufficient quantity from the refinery they will have to stop and top up elsewhere in the world. And that takes time. So 
the 30 days the refiner was offering was too short. So after a protracted argument, they came to a 45 day free storage with $5 per metric ton of overstayed uh, products. Then the refinery proposed a processing fee of $2. I remember uh, Dr. Brown was almost uh, falling off the, of, uh, you know, he was, and he went on. He told the MD politely though, that that is not on, that, uh, uh, and they had uh, better make a, a, you know, in the process, they had also uh, gone on for a dinner in the evening. The MD himself did not go because he knows as a chief negotiator, if he attends the, the dinner, he may compromise his stand on some issues. So he asked his director of operations to represent him. When they came back the following day, uh, WRI offered $1 against the $2 that the refinery had requested. And he explained, that's why it's a quote examples that are standard. He said, this type of uh, processing fee is called incremental processing fee. So some refiners charge as low as half a dollar per barrel. After much bargaining, they eventually agreed on 1.25 barrels. By the time you start talking about the laws governing a contract and all payment terms and so on, you know that negotiation is coming to an end. But uh, that is, uh, there is something else which you have to watch out. We call it last minute tactics. That is the time the other side will say, oh, let's I forget. Uh, then they introduce something completely new that was never covered during negotiation. Of course, you are advised to ignore such, uh, you know. So, Mohammed, you haven't given me a usual five minutes to round up, but I think uh, uh, um, keep it to time and uh, don't say stop like uh, Nigerian drivers do. They only give signal when okay. they are already turning. They only I'll, give signal when they are already turning. <laughs> I'll be very grateful if you can round up in five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> I, I so, will stop you though, but you can help drive not in five minutes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. So what, what I have tried to do, the, the case study I, I chose was our refinery. That is the uh, something that I have known practically. So I wanted to give you something that uh, I, I know, uh, that I have witnessed. As I told you, we could take any other technical issue and set up a negotiation, uh, but time will not allow us to uh, have uh, more cases. So you can see that negotiation, it's a very important uh, skill for engineers, particularly because uh, lawyers that uh, go into negotiation with uh, uh, with engineers, they understand the legal aspect of the negotiation, but they don't know uh, when the parties were talking about B S W and W. The lawyers there do not know what this means, even if they know the words, they don't know the implication. So you have to. Uh, be very careful. The important thing is to graph those uh, concepts that I started with at the beginning. There are many other uh, uh, things that, uh, but 
you can increase your, you know, you can read books, you can Google, all this information you can get, uh, you know, as I told you earlier from the beginning, uh, when we started, I, I, I didn't go, nobody taught me. I just on my own, killed interest. And, uh, you know, so as the child is shouting there, it means the end is in sight. So I'm leaving you with this, what I say, practice makes perfect. Say you are a researcher and you have discovered a process that can improve productivity in aging oil wells. This is a very important uh, you know, area. And you have a pattern which you want to sell to an oil company. Now, I want you to think of how you will prepare and carry out such a negotiation. I'll give you a hint at the end. Or oh, another one, your company has been sued by the community in which you operate because of massive pollution and are demanding two billion naira. You'll be going to court. At the end, the judge says the matter should be settled out of court. Now, I want you to tell me how you'd handle the negotiation. They would, what I would suggest for those who are interested in uh, acquiring more insight into negotiation, get a colleague who has attended this lecture to play the role of the oil company and then the community so that uh, you, can, uh, you can exchange notes and see how well you have prepared all those stages of negotiation that I talked about. So uh, that's what I'm leaving behind. <laughs> Mahmoud. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's, that, that's great. We, we call it public lecture but I think this is public training. <laughs> when are we submitting the homework, sir? Uh, this is a hypothetical <laughs> homework. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Everybody because will agree with me. Any, uh, any, anybody, anybody who... Mahmoud, anybody who, yes. sub, who, who submits it to me, I will mark it, but there will be a fee. It will, that time it won't be free. Marking fee. <laughs> yes. That's, that, that's, that's OK, sir. OK. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So everybody will agree with me that Dr. Oda has done the justice to this topic. In public lecture, Normally, you just bring out the key points for people to go and ponder. But he presented it like he would have in a classroom teaching his students, which some of us are actually his students. Thank you very much again. And a round of applause for Dr. Oda again, please. Now, before we go to the Next item, I want to recognize some uh, uh, key people in the society that joined us uh, 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 later, after we started. We have a, a past president, Professor S.S. Adefila. You are welcome, sir. Thank you so much. And I also want to mention that, incidentally, today, 15th August, is his birthday. Uh, happy um, birthday. Happy birthday, sir. And Thank you all. The, mm. party, the birthday party is happy taking place. Happy birthday, at sir. Thank you so much. The birthday party is taking place at 3 p.m. I will share the link on mm -hmm. the various platform later. After okay. after this 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 uh, event. Okay. Happy birthday, sir. 
Thank you so much. <laughs> the vice chairman of the chapter, Dr. Momo, also joined us. He came on earlier, I think, about the time we were starting. I didn't see him again. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We also have uh, the chairman now. Is here. He also had network issues from the beginning. Mr. Chairman, you are being represented by the Secretary, Engineer Cyril Ojono, and he has presented your opening remark, but we still need to recognize your presence. You can say hello, sir, to the house. He's still not on. Hmm? He's still not on the uh -huh. I understand he is your link to join. That's why I saw two Dr. Oh, Momo. No. Okay, okay, yes, I remember. He He's used my link, that's true. He's here, I'm seeing him. He has to okay. unmute himself. Engineer Onyekachi Onugu, your mic is mute. It's on now. What? It's on now, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. has already okay. presented the opening remark on your behalf. Thank you. So just say hello to the house in 60 seconds. All right. Hello to the house. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wada, for that brilliant uh, presentation. Um, we expected it. And um, I'm happy to have our past president, Professor Adefila, joining us. Uh, my regard to the chairman of the occasion and the speaker. speaker. Thank you. There's somebody in traffic. I build. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Engineer Onugu. Now. Uh, we we'll take general contributions from the floor and we are going to proceed like this. If you click on your name, you see a, a raised hand um, uh, uh, icon. Click on it. From my end, I will see all the hands that are up. So I'll call your name, you unmute yourself, you speak. When you finish, you unmute and put the hand down so that we do it in an orderly uh, uh, manner. All contributions should not be more than two minutes because we are many so that we can give everyone else, everybody equal opportunity to make contribution. After we've gone around, and somebody that has spoken before has more to say, he can raise his hand up again, and we shall recognize them. So that's the uh, uh, procedure. There are always elders. I'll start with you, Professor Adefila. I'm seeing some hands up already. Professor Adefila, after you, Engineer Yunus, and uh, Professor Adefila, your mic is on mute. I've unmuted. I've unmuted. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, I don't know how to address you, technical secretary, technical chair, technical president. Myself? Um, yes. I'm just an errand boy, sir. The <laughs> moderator. Actually, Dr. Momo is the chairman of the um, public lecture committee. So, no, okay. You are, you are uh, doing very well, sir. I'm, I'm doing the work they asked me to do. I'm just a moderator. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much, um, FCT Nasrawa chapter. You are doing us proud. Lagos is doing us proud. Edo, um, 
Delta. Delta. They are doing us proud. Uh, of recent, um, Quara or Yo or Shun, they woke up and they are doing us proud. Thank you all very much. And I'm sure many other chapters will come up and start inviting us. I saw Professor Kuye, yeah, he's still there. Professor Kuye, thank you all the way from Burakot. This COVID has actually uh, availed us of new ways. And perhaps these new ways may become new normal. Thank everybody. Uh, Dr. Wada, thank you very much for the, for the wonderful training. It's been, it's been termed training rather than lecture. We, we promise that we'll submit our homeworks uh, subsequently. Uh, I saw that Dr. Wada prepared these uh, notes before COVID because you, you can see that he was talking in pre-COVID um, uh, language. He was asking us to, to, to have warm handshake at the end. I think COVID will not allow ha work, work ha handshake. Perhaps he'll be talking about something else later. <laughs> he'll be changing <laughs> some of his language. Um, thank you very much for uh, Dr. Wada for filling this very important gap for us because usually many of us are, are deficient in this thing. Even though our basic equations, you know, already suggest negotiation, already ne ne so suggest negotiation, and all the things we use that equal sign, this side is equal to this side, and so on and so forth. Even though you may have many parties, many more parties on one side. They are all, you know, uh, there. But we can see that we engineers have said it several times on many occasions that we engineers have a lot of managerial um, practices embedded in our engineering, but we do not use them. I'm so happy that we are having this kind of public lectures that will help um, we older ones to start imparting on the younger ones, uh, manage, management uh, abilities, even right from a very um, a younger uh, age than, than us. And I want to challenge some of us to actually come up, for, come, come up and bring up, bring up those um, correspondence in management and in our, in our um, science and engineering. Here we've had languages about scope and all those kind of things. Don't we scope? We have had languages, you know, about um, 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 the, uh, no. the type of, you know, no, rules, background rules. Uh, you know, if you start, if you are being taught thermodynamics, you will be told that there are three rules. And if you go into those rules, you sign up if you look at them systematically, they are just telling us the kind of rules we are being taught in management today. Honestly, if you go, go back and look at all these, we already have them in us. So I think we can be regarded as, you know, uh, being compliant with that peak, peak um, advert of those days. It's in you. It's already in us. All we need to do is just wake, wake, wake up and we see Without any apology, we see that when we get into these new areas, be it accounting, be it negotiation, and so on and so forth, in a few years, we'll, we'll, over, we bypass, we overtake most of the others because we have in us, we already have in us um, fundamentals of all these things. I'm sure I'm talking the mind of many of us, and we start looking at it, you know that way. So uh, thank you very much for this um, lecture. Um, I've um, told Dr. Wada that when he comes back, he will change the platform. The platform on which he, he, he started, his, he presented this lecture from pre-COVID to post-COVID because a lot of jargons which he used there may not uh, 
um, uh, be compliant with, with COVID. I don't think you want, to, you want to, like I said earlier, you don't want to give any one warm handshake to anybody now. <laughs> so again, um, uh, FCT Nasarawa's chapter, thank you very much. Um, um, Mr. Chair, uh, represent, well, the chair is here. The oh, vice chairman no, representing. No, no, no. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the chairman is here. The representative of the chairman also is here. We thank all of you. We thank all of you playing wonderful roles, very wonderful and active roles. I just pray that um, we can continue this way and we'll, we hope um, uh, the board is actually looking into these lectures and finding uh, people they can use as representative lecturers, because we can pick some of these to go and actually start um, giving lectures to our young ones after they finish from university. I had proposed earlier sometime that we should spend about three, four weeks um, after, before students actually graduate from their universities, we can do it on a geographical basis so that some, some people will come in for about two to three weeks, showing them how they can translate all those engineering principles to all these management principles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for, the, for your kind words. Um, sorry, I should have recognized uh, Professor Ayo Kue. Really, I don't know how I miss him out. Professor Kue. Professor Kue is the coordinator of the education uh, sectoral group of NSCHE and also de facto coordinating coordinators of the sectoral groups. We are happy to have you in our meet, sir. It's my pleasure, sir. Before I start recognizing the hands that are being raised, we have a tradition in uh, Abuja. We always uh, treat our guests well. So that's why I'm giving you people the opportunity to make contribution before I start recognizing the people back home. If you have any contributions, sir. Huh? Okay, um, Engineer Yunus, go ahead and make your contribution. Two minutes, not more than, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you won't be able to see my face. Why? <laughs> what happened to your face? Show your face. Show your face. <laughs> Show your face. <laughs> you have decided to hide your face. <laughs> Let me let me hide my face. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, uh, thank Pass you is in his bedroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are right, sir. You are right, sir. Uh, Thank you. I I want to thank appreciate the uh, presence of uh, my herders in the association in the profession. I want to appreciate the uh, very resourceful, very uh, informative. Uh, presentation by Dr. Wada, who is also one of our headers in the chapter. I want to say that the lecture has um, widened our knowledge about negotiation. Uh, in my only two way, I'm also a negotiation, maybe at a, a conventional level, wherein uh, you negotiate well, with about 100 or 200 members of, uh, of parties to a convention in attendance. So it is all, almost the same principle, except that it is not two party involved, two parties involved. It is a large number and you may not be able to read the minds of others. So sometimes you go with the hope of having all your demands met but you end up having to uh, moderate your, your position 
at least get some out of your request. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, in future uh, presentations of this nature, we'll be able to share experiences from other perspectives. Uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much, uh, Engineer Yunus. Dr. Momo, you are next. Yeah, I think, um, I think yeah, what uh, I want to say is in follow-up to what uh, our past, uh, immediate past president, president has said. Um, you know, sometimes when we hear the word negotiation, uh, even from my own point of view as a young engineer, even up to a long, a, for up to many years after, I used to think that negotiation is just uh, people at the <laughs> level of uh, labor leaders, union leaders, and so on and so forth. Because that is uh, where we, because that is the people that are always involved in negotiation. Uh, and perhaps maybe uh, until I went to work in Nigeria Institute for Management as a director of uh, management education uh, for some years uh, that I began to understand that negotiation is something that we do every day. You know, even in our engineering design, uh, you do, when you look at the, what you do in, uh, in engineering designs, uh, process design, uh, when you want to start with feasibility study, go to this, go to this, you are indirectly in a way negotiating. You know, you are looking at options that are available options and what those options would do for you and how you, you can get the best out of whatever options you want to choose. So to me, that is also negotiation. And uh, somehow, I think I happened to, to have listened to Dr. Wada on this lecture. Uh, and recently, we had the occasion where we had to negotiate in my place of work because we wanted some people to take up some of our products that we have already designed and produced. Uh, we want people to come and take them off for manufacturing and so on and so forth. So we had to negotiate with a lot of uh, organizations who showed interest. And uh, I want to say that I, from some of the points that um, even that was, uh, I was the one that led negotiation. And uh, from the points that some of those things that I've heard from Dr. Wada, it really helped me a lot uh, to be able to do the negotiation well. Uh, I think, uh, like uh, Professor Filler has said, most of these things are embedded in one way or the other in our engineering curriculum. But until you begin to face real life challenges, you perhaps don't know that they ever existed or you can apply them. I think uh, for me, this is a lecture that is so open now. Uh, it's unfortunate that somehow the younger generation, I don't know how many of the younger generation are, are, are here today to listen to it. You know, I, for me, I wish I had listened to lectures like this when I was a younger engineer. Perhaps things would have, I mean, I would have done things differently from the way I perhaps I did them then. So, but by and large, I think uh, it is our duty as senior engineers now to begin to see how we can impart all of this to the younger generation. Thank you very much, Dr. Wada, for a brilliant lecture. I'm true. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Vice Chairman, Dr. Dr. Momo, for, for your contribution. Um, Engineer. Can you see my hand? Uh, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Okay. I'm losing your hand. Are you hearing me? Yes, yeah, yes we are yeah. hearing you. Okay, you are hearing me. Yes. Okay, uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Momo. Thank you, Dr. Momo. Negotiation is really key. We can't relieve the importance. Two things are picked and which we should try to re-emphasize in your lecture. Preparation and team composition, team selection. Once you get these two things right, you are okay. I give you one example. 
of preparation. The Aburi Accord failed because of lack of preparation. You are okay. I want you to go back to the history and see what happened at Aburi. It was purely, it failed purely on preparation from one side. Now, selection of team. You know, oftentimes, especially in a government setup, like an NPC or something like that, selection of team has always been a problem in a thing like this, either in project management or in negotiation. We find it that it is an opportunity to go out for jamboree, especially if the venue is outside the place. And sometimes when you go for this negotiation, the very party you are going to negotiate with, we want to treat you with great hospitality that you forget what you have come for. Apart from the fact that uh, some of the members of the team are deficient in knowledge in the matter. And so team selection and preparation, once it is gotten right, then there wouldn't really be, there will be less conflict in managing our project. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Engineer Oluku. I'm checking, I'm just checking the chat area now. If you have any uh, question you don't want to speak, you can post them uh, there. I also saw comments that some people are having difficulty joining the, the Zoom because after the registration, the link you receive to join is specific and unique to you. If any other person uses it, it's your name that the person will come in with. So we are streaming also live on, uh, on uh, YouTube. Those, uh, the, the, I will share the link. I'm posting the link now in the chat area as well. So you can share with uh, uh, those people that are having difficulty in connecting through uh, uh, Zoom. Now, the engineer Onuku, you want to speak again? Okay, the hand is down. Um, I saw engineer Tukurulawal earlier. He's a senior general manager of uh, environment and um, community affairs of language cement plants worldwide. So, Engineer Lawa. Okay. Engineer Onuku, you want to talk again? Hello, any contribution from uh, From from any other person? Yes, sir. Hold on, sir. Thank you. I see no colleagues. Good, good afternoon. Yeah. This is a very wonderful presentation. We really, it really impacted to us loudly because prior to this time, we didn't have much idea that negotiation of this nature, especially in terms of technical and engineers, is not that very paramount. But you can understand that it is very important and very essential. Thank you for the presentation, sir. And thank you very Mahmoud, much. Thank you very much for your wonderful organization and coordination. Engineer More grace to your elbows. Thank you. More grace to your elbows. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you, sir. So if, if there are comments on the... 
that came through on the in the chat area, which I will share with us quickly to go through before um, I call. Okay, two participants raised hand. Abrashid Babalola, Doctor Abrashid Babalola. Thank you, um, my chair, Engineer Mahmoud. From Uyo or from Kaduna or from uh, Abuja? Where are you? You are a man of many no. locations. I'm speaking from Uyo right now. From Uyo right now. How is Uyo today? So, well, it's okay. Uh, thank God it's not rainy as usual today. Thank the you. weather is very bright. I thank want to you. thank uh, the organizers of this program uh, uh, for a well uh, organized uh, public lecture is uh, very uh, uh, good hearing from Dr. Wada and others. This is another uh, lecture that has added to the series that we have had within the period that has been very highly impacting. So I must congratulate the organizer, especially uh, 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 Engineer Mahmoud uh, for anchoring the, the program. He has been sending messages almost uh, uh, on hourly reminder. And that has made this a, a successful uh, you know, uh, public lecture. So this is very good. We expect more of this from uh, the chapter, Abuja Nasarawa chapter. Uh, I want to also congratulate my, my father, my uh, distinguished professor, Professor S.S. Adefila. Uh, as he become plus one today, uh, I wish him very many fruitful years ahead. Uh, we are going to celebrate uh, him at 90 by the will of Almighty God and above. So, I um, uh, think I want to stop this way. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer, Engineer Babalola. Thank you, Engineer you Dr. Babalola. Thank you. You want to talk again? No, I'm just thanking Engineer Babalola. No, I mean Engineer Yunus. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm sorry. Uh, let me uh, also uh, congratulate uh, our professor on his birthday. May God continue to strengthen him. In addition to my comment, I, I think the issue of uh, negotiation also uh, includes uh, lobbying. In some instances, to be able to advance your position, you may introduce the idea of lobbying, particularly if many parties are involved. So in a situation where you are pushing across your own position, uh, for others to appreciate why you are pushing that position and what benefits your position will bring to them. You can always uh, apply lobbying. Lobbying not at the venue. It could be before the meeting. It could be during um, a breakout. It could be just before the decision is taken. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very so, much. Uh, yes. Thank you. You know, uh, Dr. Weda, I will give you an opportunity to respond briefly while I compile the comments from the chat area. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Mahmoud. I, I listened, this is what, uh, at some, at uh, Professor Defila, I remarked. It was uh, more like a, a training. And uh, I was prepared uh, to have questions, but I just had one humor. Incidentally, Professor Defila, I am, I don't want to be called a joker, but I'm a very humorous person. In fact, I write jokes. I have contributed jokes even uh, to BBC. So I'm thinking that 
we can team up together and uh, I know, share humor. Uh, because, uh, yes, you are right. This lecture, I, I started putting together before the COVID-19. And uh, when it came, I didn't have time to, you know, so you saw the shaking of hands. But the new order, it will be difficult for that habit to die. It will be difficult because uh, shaking hands, it's, uh, you know, it shows uh, agreement. So we're talking about win-win. So we shall continue to shake hands at the risk of uh, contacting the virus. Uh, many of the comments were very uh, complimentary and I thank all the people who have uh, appreciated the little effort. Uh, what was said about uh, skis outside of core technical ski, it's very important because uh, at one time in NMPC, uh, uh, we started talking about uh, training commercial managers. This, that training involves not just what you know in engineering, but uh, so many other skills. By the time you become a manager in an organization, you are supposed to be very broad uh, in your uh, training. Uh, but uh, here, uh, because of maybe poverty, we, people don't want training. Even when they go for outside training, they're never, they're, their minds are never there. They're after going out to uh, other things like uh, purchases and things like that. So I think that uh, uh, one needs to uh, you know, to train oneself throughout one's life. Now the internet has made it easier. Uh, you can, you don't have to sit and wait for a formal lecture. You can on your own. Just choose any topic, and I'm telling you, you'll be surprised how much uh, information is available on the internet. And uh, I. Uh, not congratulating Professor Adifila uh, uh, on his birthday yet because uh, we are going to be attending the program uh, about three o'clock. Um, but uh, yes, uh, you know, I understand the lobbying and suggestion you are making. Some organizations, particularly in the U.S., they have lobbyists in their on their organigram. So. Uh, we have uh, government lobbies. Uh, they occupy positions in the and these are the people that uh, lobby the government, the lobby, uh, uh, the lobby, the lawmakers cool. for issues that relate to them. So, uh, that thing. I. I will end here and thank everybody for who has participated and uh, Mahmoud for doing a wonderful job as usual of moderation. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, sir. We'll still talk about you before we, we round up finally. But gentlemen, we just mentioned the Professor Adefila's uh, birthday is at, in passing. This is not the occasion. A lot of posts are coming through for birthday wishes. I started capturing them. I see that there's a lot. So anybody that is wishing to participate in the birthday is 3 p.m. today and the, you can just copy out the meeting ID and the, and the uh, passcode. This has also been posted on the, um, in the chat area. You can copy it from, uh, from there. It's not a two-way event like we had in June, June. So it's a single event. So today is his day when I was introducing him, I cannot but 
mention it. So post the messages on the chat forum. The meeting will open even before the event, maybe an hour, maybe like from two o'clock. So you can post the messages in that um, in that area. Now, um, I can see more hands up again. So we quickly go through the 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 comments. They are basically a commendation. There's really no no real. Uh, uh, question. So, but um, Dr. Oda, I assure you, your presentation was very detailed to the extent that even if somebody is distracted, he will still understand where you are going and the principles you put forward. So, I believe that's the main reason why we don't. We didn't have uh, 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 questions. Secondly, negotiation. The topic is not something that we are taught in uh, chemical engineering, and it's not something that we also experience uh, practice most of the time as a core area. But in our general life, every minute, every turn, based on. What this your what we understood from this your lecture now, at every moment we are negotiating, you know, and uh, if you even look at when we are talking about how much time you have, how much should I give you, when you reach halfway I should alert you, is is still part of what I understand now is a negotiation, but most of us have never seen it this way, so as you are making the presentation. The way I was following, I believe that's how everybody was following. You see that these are things that happen in your life on a daily basis, every minute of the day, but we've never really conceptualized it in, in this way. So, um, I want to call on any other person that has any observe any comment to make before I hand over to Dr. Momo to wrap up. Anybody, any comment from any other person? So, um, Dr. Momo, before I call on Dr. Momo, uh, those people that need a copy of this presentation, if you are not on the chapter platform, you can leave your email address in the chat, in, in the chat area. For us, so that we will send it to you, uh, Dr. Momo. If you are ready, you have a uh, five minutes to do a wrap up, and um, we take it from there. Engineer Akimbode, yes. you want to talk? You are joining us on telephone, Engineer Baba Tunde Akin, but my yoga. Yes, that's right. I, I am just um, I'm just reconnecting. I, I was on before. Well, okay. Can I talk now? Yes, go ahead. I just want to I just want to contribute that um, negotiation is uh, presently taught in under project management. Uh, in procurement, in, in the, in the subtopic procurement. Um, the Project Management Institute, which is the American version, um, accommodates procurement within the project management training. Well, it's not the same thing with the English version. And um, negotiation is presently taught in project management. And I just want to add, just very briefly, that um, there are two recognized versions of negotiation, the principled negotiation and positional negotiation. While the principled negotiation focuses on interest, uh, positional uh, negotiation focuses on position. And while the principled negotiation um, focuses on the win-win approach, uh, the positional negotiation focuses on a win-lose approach. And while um, 
the principal negotiation uses collaboration. Uh, you are also you are looking for values to share, uh, and looking. I mean, wanting to make sure that everybody is happy, the two parties are happy. So there's uh, in principal negotiation you have um, uh, it uses collaboration as a tool for reaching mutually satisfying outcomes. Um, contrary, contrary wise, uh, the positional negotiation, each party uses competition to achieve uh, personal, personally satisfying best results. And um, also under principled negotiation, uh, there's a greater potential for a continuing business relationship. I mean, if you have a win-win situation, you are sure to want to come together again and do business together. But personal uh, negotiation creates highest profit. I mean, uh, in the people using personal negotiation want to get the highest profit, but that's not very, uh, very, uh, very, uh, it doesn't help uh, future business. So there is um, a tendency, there is a, a record, I mean, a, a, uh, you know, recommendation that you use both principled and positional negotiation. You don't just uh, hold on because you don't want to lose much if you use uh, principled negotiation, and you don't want to uh, put your uh, your part, the other party at a loss when you use positional uh, uh, negotiation. So this is what I want to call the boot. I also want to add that. Um, you know, by way of because of certain nationals tend to send people who are not decision makers in negotiation. I mean, you need decision makers. You need people to agree and or disagree. But in certain uh, nationalities like China, they will never. Most people that come to the negotiation table uh, always have to have to. They are not able to take decisions uh, immediately. They have to, and they may even take decisions and, fall, you know, fall back. I mean, they, they say, oh, we're not going ahead with this anymore. So you need to demand that uh, people who are coming to the negotiation table uh, from the parties uh, should be able to take some level of, um, of decision. And if they have to go back within, it, it has to be within a very short time. That's my contribution, very shortly. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer yeah. Akimbode. Thank you for your yeah. for your contribution. Yeah, yeah. We still have like uh, three minutes to spare because after the wrap up, there will be no further discussion. Um, Dr. Momo. Dr. Momo? Dr. Momo, are you here? Yeah, I, I was, I, I don't know, I was off there at the time. Sorry. So yes. you have five minutes to wrap up. You said? You have five minutes to wrap up inclusive of vote of thanks and so on and so forth. So that we can close by one as we sh as, as planned. I don't want to, I mean, I will. So appreciate everybody that have come, our seniors that came all the way or that joined all the way from wherever they are. People like uh, Professor Adefila, uh, Professor Ayo Kunye, uh, Dr. Rashid, and many others that joined outside uh, Abuja. I want to thank you for coming. And uh, I also want to thank the presenter, our able Dr. Wada. Like I always say, he's a man that is always very thorough in whatever he's doing. You know, I made a comment during his birthday that most of the time when I do a write-up, I always uh, want to pass it to him so that uh, he will uh, help me scrutinize it. And I know that uh, once it goes through, uh, I am just certain that 
everything in that uh, write-up is okay. So I want to appreciate him for the lecture, for his thoroughness, and for showing us the younger one uh, what we also should be doing when we get to his age level. Uh, so I want to thank God for him. And I also want to thank the chapter for putting on this, for all the efforts that everybody made, the secretary of the chapter, the chairman of the chapter, and uh, all the other people that contributed in one way or the other to the success of this uh, program. I think uh, I'm happy that uh, I am part of this. And I want to say it's, it's good uh, to continue like this. Let us not be tired as a chapter. And let's continue to set pace as we have been doing. So on behalf of everybody, I want to say thank you very much for this uh, wonderful public lecture. And of course, for our chief, uh, uh, what do I call him? Like, is he chief coordinator, chief chairman, chief everything, chief technician, chief uh, engineer, uh, everything, engineer Mahmoud. Uh, I begin to wonder whether you read the computer science or is engineering you read. But thank God you are a chemical engineer with varied experiences. So I want to thank you for the way you have been handling some of these programs. Thank you very much. And God bless every one of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Momo. Um, I will now call on uh, Engineer A.G. Yunus, Abdelgadi Yunus, to do the closing prayer. Uh, we thank God for giving us this opportunity to come together again, come together by uh, factual means, where we can uh, hear from one another. We thank God for good deliberation. We, uh, we thank God for giving us the opportunity to have uh, this uh, informative lecture. We pray that it will continue to give all of us good health so that we can always participate effectively in the affairs of the association. Uh, in God's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. I thank That's everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Everybody, thank you for coming and thank you for all your, your support. So this meeting has officially ended now. I've stopped the recording. But the, anybody that wish to discuss